What did you boys make of uh, Chelsea's performance, especially against yourselves, LB, at the weekend? Because some Chelsea fans have been fuming, which I think is over the top. Some Chelsea fans think they were a good striker away from being as good as, you know, a level on par with, with City. How did you see it, LB? Uh, yeah, somewhere in the middle, probably, not to sit on a fence. But I actually thought they was all right. I didn't think they were too bad. Um, I think the goalkeeper's trash. Uh, Sanchez, I think he's absolutely awful. I think he's mid-level Premier League club at best. Uh, to be playing for Chelsea, a club that want to be getting back in the, the Champions League and winning titles, uh, he's just he's nowhere near the level that you need. Um, we all know they've still not got a striker. You know what I mean? If they had a decent striker, maybe the result could have been slightly different. You know what I mean? Because uh, Jackson obviously had uh, the chance that, that Edison saved and he had the goal that was offside. He should have really been offside. But in between... I don't think they're a million miles away. I think the centre-back pairing, that's going to be interesting to see. Fafana done all right, but is he going to be able to get up to a top level given his lack of minutes over the last couple of years? Colwell, Colwell, I'm not sure about him. He was good at Brighton, but I don't know what his level is. We'll have to see how he develops. The midfield, Enzo, you can't have Enzo in that creative role on his own. Not if you're playing uh, Caicedo and, and, and Lavia in behind. If you're going to go like Solidify, you're going to go Caicedo and Lavia, then for me, you're going to have to stick a Jao Felix or a Cole Palmer in the creative position because Enzo, I just don't think, is creative enough. If, if you're playing Lavia on his own or Caicedo on his own with Enzo and Cole Palmer, I think that's probably OK. But Enzo on his own, I don't think he's creative enough. Don't understand the the, uh, the Unkunku left wing. I didn't think that really worked, to be honest with you. Um, but they're just things that Maresca, as a manager, should sort of solve as the season goes through. I actually think... It was not too bad. I, I just think that they need a striker and a new goalkeeper. They, they get a new striker. They got Oshiman, for example, yeah, and got a decent striker. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think saying making a run at the top four is is completely ridiculous. Now, of course, that all depends on the manager. The manager could flop, but if they get a decent striker and a good goalkeeper, they're not a million miles away from the top four. There's still there's still issues with the squad, one hundred percent. But I, I think if they don't get a striker. Especially a striker. I think the strikers are more, the priority. If they don't get a striker, there's not a chance they're getting top four because they, they, they won't. <laughs> I was speaking to Don and he was he was like, oh, yeah, it was you know game of fine margins. I just think you're going to be saying that a lot. Oh, if, I, if Jackson would have put the ball in the back of the net, if this guy would have put the ball in the back of the net. Well, at the end of the day, you've got to stop talking about that and get someone that does it. If you get someone that does it, I think top four is, is a possibility. If they don't get a striker, no chance. Six is probably best they're going to get. I think they can fight for top four if they get a world-class goalkeeper and a world-class striker. Other than that, I think they've got hope in hell. Nicholas Jackson is a bozo in front of goal. Their goal different. I think LB is being kind. I think their goalkeeper's championship level. Absolute awful. Um, I thought he was awful at Brighton. I think he's even worse at Chelsea, if I'm honest with you. I don't get the centre-back pairing. I don't really think Baddy Ashile is good enough to come in. I don't really think that um, they've got any other centre-halves other than Colwell and... For Fana that I look at, and I just think they're okay. I mean, this Colwell guy is massively overhyped, man. He's not as good as Bramthwaite or Mark Gehe, in my opinion. Nowhere near. I don't know where the, these Chelsea fans are getting this loving from. Um, so I think they've got problems, man. Um, Kukurea has been good in the last four months, and that's a, Savio made him look like an absolute bang average championship left back. He just absolutely sold him every mm. single time. Um, and I don't know. I look at that Chelsea side after it being spent a billion on it and think I'd probably take one or two, but that would be it. I don't rate them. I'm sorry, I don't. I agree with LB. I think they've got to try and balance out that midfield. Enzo needs to just be dumped out of it. He's not good enough. Um, waste of money. That will go down as one of the worst ever signings in Premier League history. £105 million. You don't know where the hell he's playing. Caicedo and Lavia are both better than him because they've got an actual position where they believe they can play. And I think Palmer or Nkunku uh, or Felix, if he comes in, will have to play in the attacking midfield role and then have to put the other one up top. Um, look, if Osamen comes in, they might be able to change things. If a Diogo Costa or Oblak or Michael Magnon or someone comes in goal, then we might look at Chelsea and go, do you know what? With a, a fit team, they could win that conference league and go for a top four. But at the moment, I've got Chelsea outside the top six, man. I, I don't think they're good enough. And I don't yeah, rate I, I, 
it's it's it, yeah, but you only don't rate Maresca because you've never really seen him in it. Like it, it's it's the unknown. Yeah, yeah, but what I'm saying is I don't rate Maresca enough to then go actually. Yeah, at least I got a manager that I can. Yeah, 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 but him. yeah, but it's it's the unknown on, on Maresca. The thing is for me, and we said this for, for for a while now, is how would you spend over a billion quid and not have a decent goalkeeper and not have a decent striker? I mean, I don't know about you guys, yeah, yeah. And, and the chat as well. If I'm if I take over a football club and I'm spending a billion quid, yeah, even more, one point three, one point four billion quid. The two positions that I'm going for first, I'm getting an elite level goalkeeper and I'm getting an elite level striker. Because ultimately, mm. they're the two main positions on the football pitch which can win or lose your games. And I cannot believe they spent all that money and, and you know, Dan reckons Sanchez is a championship level goalkeeper. I think that's probably a tad harsh. Yeah, um, but we both yeah, agree he's not at the... Yeah, he's probably not at the standard of Chelsea. <laughs> And they have Jackson, who's just not a very good goal scorer. It's absolutely incredible that they've, they've allowed this to happen. And to be honest with you, you know, if they would have got decent striker and a decent goalkeeper and when when they when he took them over and spent all this money in the first place, if you'd done that in the first window, they probably would have avoided a lot of this mess because they probably would have finished higher because they had a better yeah. goalkeeper and a better striker. It's absolutely bizarre that they've allowed this to happen. Now, listen, yeah. I actually think that they're starting... The, these owners and the, this this board, I think I, I'm getting the vibe that they're starting to realise that this youth, 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 youth isn't necessarily going to work. You have to have some blended, like more experience in there. Are they though? Will be? Are they though? That's what I'm thinking. I mean, well, Pedro Neto's come in, but that's it, isn't it? Yeah, but Pedro Neto, yeah, but no, but Pedro Neto's different in the sense that he's played Premier League and he's a good footballer, and we know he's a good footballer. Not a gamble, is it? Like we know what you're going to get from Pedro. Neto. No, and that's now, what I mean. That, but that's what I mean. I agree with that one. That's the only one, though, right? Yeah. Well, well, they're, well they're, 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 they're all tossing and uh, Kieran Dewsbury Hall. What else? <laughs> Everyone's got different opinion on them. I think they're good players. But yeah, I think they're all right. The fact that neither started the first game, especially Dewsbury Hall, who is a Maresca's boy, is interesting to me because my view all summer has been that's your experience core to help these youngsters. Whether we rate them or not is irrelevant. They've gone and bought 24, 25, 26-year-olds. If they're going to be the bench players and the backup players, you're going to be where you were last season. You've got a new system that's being, or an adaptation of last year's system that's being implemented with a, with a fledgling manager with young, inexperienced players starting the football matches. And I think that making Enzo captain I can kind of understand why. Maybe it's a, an attempt to fix all the issues surrounding him in the summer. Each to their own on that. But you created a bit of a problem for yourself. How the hell can you drop your captain? No one does. Your captain starts games, generally speaking, unless he's been the captain for four, five, six, seven years and he's in the, 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 the latter stages of his career. It's okay for him to be on the bench with the vice captain having the armband. I think it's acceptable. You can't turn around and go, look, Reese James is out now. He might be out again for a while. He's always out injured. Enzo, you're the captain, but you're going to sit on the bench. He's going to play. Lavia and Caicedo are better in the pivot because that's how he seems to be wanting to play right now. And he can't play number 10. So it's those little things I, I, I'm, I would be concerned about as a Chelsea fan because Dewsbury Hall should be starting in that, in that position for me or Nkunku or... Palmer and he didn't and it's one game so I don't I don't want to go over the top but it's about those guys have got to be introduced soon but I do agree with you the Sancho news is interesting because the other day it came from a an average source I can't even remember who it was it got played down but the athletic I want to read their words here because it's been it's all in my it's all in my group chat it's all in my dm it says here Sancho is a live situation with Man United asking for 40 million pounds some at United sense Chelsea will make an approach before the end of the window. That's from The Athletic. Now, they're not, again, some people won't like them, but you know that, that's an organisation that are fed information by, by the likes of Ornstein and, and Laurie Whitwell, etc. So this isn't something that's been, you know, this isn't being fed by the, the star on Sunday. Sancho would be one of those deals. I think he's a very talented player, but he would be one of those deals that makes me go, it's a mess. And I'll tell you as to why. All summer, Chelsea fans have told me Maresca likes touchline wingers, wingers with speed that like to go on the outside to get the ball to the touchline or byline and cut it back. It's not really Jaden Sancho. Sancho isn't, he's quick, but that, that isn't his game. He's a very different, he likes the ball to feet, he likes to play. Yes, he can run, he can dribble past people, but he's not a, he's not a better version of a Madweke, although he's a better footballer than Madweke. He's not a better version. 
Pedro Neto is what I consider, according to Chelsea fans who've done their research on Modesca to be a Maresca style player. Also, if they sign Jaden Sancho, who's he starting over? Who's dropping out? And that's and, and I understand that in the end, you're going to get answers to, to all these questions. But I just look at it and it feels like, well, he's a big name. He's a star. Go and get him. And I'd be very happy taking 40 million pounds of their money. Hopefully that goes towards a player that's that 40 million. If they are seriously considering Sancho, spend that 40 million pounds on Ivan Tony. Get yeah. a goal scorer. It's and wild. It, it, it is wild to me. Like I would love to. I don't actually want to see Sancho go to any English club in case he makes it. But I'm only, I think he might do well at Chelsea. But if I go by what a lot of the Chelsea fans on the football terrace have told me all summer, Sancho isn't Moresca's style of player. So it confuses me, the people that are closer to Chelsea, potentially praising this deal. It's almost like the, the you know, there are a lot of rumours coming out about the Felix deal, that Chelsea are only doing it so they can get rid of Conor Gallagher. So in the short term, they're balancing their books. Because remember, they're going to get 40 mil for Gallagher that comes in as instant income. The 35 million on 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 Felix, they can spread over seven years, which means what, what's he costing? He's costing four or five million pound year one. So, mm. on terms of those two transactions, they're making 36 million pound profit year one, yeah. and that would is where my concern would be as a Chelsea fan: is are we doing some of these deals to better our squad, or are we doing some of these deals to balance the books? Because if you're focusing on balancing the books, if your deals in any way, and by the way. Maybe a little bit of PTSD as a Man United fan. We primarily signed Cristiano Ronaldo because we were behind on shirt sales with Adidas. And if we didn't hit a certain quota by the end of that season, our renewal of our deal with Adidas was going to lose us tens of millions of pounds. Not only did we break our sales records with uh, Ronaldo coming in, over that two-year period, we sold more shirts than we'd had in the previous five years combined because of Ronaldo. A big part of that deal was financial. If you're making this signing as Yao Felix for financial reasons, if you're signing the likes of Sancho because it's uh, it will sell shirts, it will make a big traction online, and it's not about what Maresca wants and needs, you're setting the new manager up for failure. Who, if he fails, is on a five-year deal, which is going to cost you so much more money to get out of. There's certain things here that, that that concern me when it comes to Chelsea, only based on what their fans have been telling me versus the actions now of their football club. I'm a little bit confused. So if any Chelsea fans watching want to re-educate me, I'm open for it. I want to understand a little bit better around what you're doing. Right now, if I'm predicting Chelsea's position, it's between fifth and seventh. Between fifth and seventh. I don't think they've got enough to make the top four. I haven't done all along. Mm. Between fifth and seventh is, is where I would put them in terms of predictions. Let's go to some of these super chats quickly because then I want to ask you about Man City, actually. Enzo having uh, the armband uh, was still insane. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people... A lot of, I saw a lot of Chelsea fans, to be honest with you, condemning that um, over, over the course of the weekend as well. A lot of them weren't very happy. Uh, I don't think Chelsea are treating them like crap. I think it's more protecting the core group and not having it bloated like with Potter uh, by keeping players around who are not in the plan. Yeah, but you can't I mean, force the player out. That's the only thing, isn't it, Match? Like, yeah, I, I get, I get that Chelsea wants Sterling out, right? Of course, he's on three hundred and twenty-five grand a week, and he's not part of the manager's plans. But you can't force him to leave if he doesn't want to leave. You know what I mean, and, and 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 that's what Sterling's saying in the statement. He's saying, I'm, "I'm, I've come back to training early. I've got a good relationship." He said nothing wrong in that statement. Said nothing wrong. The timing was was wrong. I, I agree. He said nothing wrong. He's on three hundred and twenty-five grand a week, and he's still got three years left. So he's looking around and he's thinking, where am I getting 325 grand a week? No one's giving him that. So he's saying, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to fight for my position. So, yeah, you might not, you can say that Chelsea are not treating him poorly, but you can't now have a go at Sterling if he doesn't leave. If he, you know what I mean? Because he's not doing anything wrong. Your club shouldn't give him the contract. Yeah, yeah I, I, hear, I hear you on that completely. Uh, Terry, Chelsea are not signing Sancho. Listen, if I'd have said to you 10 days ago, Chelsea are going to sign Joe Felix, the comments would have gone, we ain't signing him, bruv. If I'd have said yeah. to you three weeks ago, you're signing Neto, a lot of people would have said, you're not signing Neto. So um, when it comes to Chelsea and buying players, I think it would be ridiculous to write off any possibilities at this particular juncture. Uh, I think this season is do or die for Chelsea. If they don't make any European spots, they might face total financial ruin and would slowly crumble. Abraham, 
I've been sent a few articles that haven't been published yet by some top financial people that have, have said very similar to this. I'm not sure why they haven't published it as of yet. Maybe, maybe it's the backlash they might get, but they've sold off assets. They're selling off all their youngsters because they get pure profit on them. I don't think it's this season. I think in the next two years, if they're not back to Champions League football and or winning trophies, you could be right. You you could be right because what are they then who have they then got to sell that they're going to make big profits on? They make big profits on, and then they're going to have to spend big again. But their income is probably going to reduce by that point. So it could happen in, but I think it's more than a year away personally. Uh, true, but a, a ban incoming, so they're trying to force people out. Yeah, apparently though, if they get a ban, they can still sell players. It's just that they can't buy players. They might be. Yeah, I hear that. Uh, United treated uh, David De Gea like trash. Yeah, a lot of people said that, and Man United got condemned for it. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, stop uh, with this Sterling BS. He is the highest earner at the club and has had the better part of two years to show his worth, and he has fouled out with the old. Again, I say the same thing, Jack. You're absolutely spot on. He has failed in the two years that he's been there, but you can't force him out of the football club. That, that, that's the point. You're absolutely spot on. Don't disagree with anything any, any Chelsea fans are saying when it comes to Sterling. He's not been good enough and he's not worth the 325 grand a week. But ultimately, you have to hold it if he doesn't want to leave. There's nothing you can do. Like You just you just pay 325 grand a week to stay at home. Like United did with Sancho. Like City were doing, well, we loaned him out, but City would have done the same with Cancelo. Every mm. every big club goes through it at some point. Like I think I started it with Aubameyang, didn't he, at some point as well. Like, yep. you know, we all, it happens to everyone, man. Uh, Sterling also can't force Chelsea to play him left back. Uh, sorry, to play him LB. <laughs> um, I, I, I did really like... back at this point. He wants <laughs> you to get on might. The pitch, <laughs> uh, Guy released a statement an hour before kickoff. Says enough. Are you right? You're spot on, Dake. Yeah, you're spot on. Sterling can't force Chelsea to play him, but the Chelsea can't force him to leave, and that's the big one. He's on three twenty-five. What Chelsea try and play Arteta? pry Arteta away from Arsenal if their project fails. <laughs> Can you imagine? Try if you want, but I don't think he fancies going there, mate. My goodness. Oh, Jesus. Uh, it, uh, Isaac here says uh, that uh, Chelsea are complicating Moresca's job. Yeah, That's but he true. also knew he knew that before he took the job, so there's no sympathy for Moresca. He's not an idiot. He knew what he's walking into. No, yeah, he's, he's an intelligent man. Uh, don't ignore the illness because of the treatment. This is true. This is very true. Very true indeed. Uh, viewers, make